All right, so this is the seventh lecture in this lecture series about creating an international sustainable civilization. This uh, particular one is about linking monism with the creation of a culture. So the previous two were focused on how contemporary science, uh, systems thinking in many, many of the sciences, social sciences, humanities, and um, quantum physics, chemistry, how all recent research is leading toward holistic thinking, um, the, the notion of an ultimate first principle, the notion of things going to higher and higher levels of complexity. So um, now, what does that imply for culture? And so in the next few lectures, so this lecture just points out that Mr. Paz, who wrote the book, The One, is aware that monism can get used to justify authoritarianism, or it can get used to justify a uh, complete commitment to diversity and pluralism, religious pluralism and humanitarianism. So um, that's what I, that's, this is a short lecture for two reasons. First, um, I, the lectures that follow are all following up on what sort of culture should we develop. So there's three about sexism and one about including atheists, another one about Puritanism and humanism as a cultural, uh, a characteristic of culture. And then we have six or so about a conference that brought together representatives of a number of different religious traditions and humanist traditions. And they decided on a common ground to support the 18 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So that's why this one is short. It's just pointing out the transition from monism to culture, and then we go into questions of culture. I also might want to make this one longer as I read more. And I also think people listening to the lecture can think of their own examples. And they should have a lot of examples because they all have their unique culture. So, all right. Okay, so here we are. Uh, okay, so what does Mr. Paz say? When applied as an official cultural or political point of view, monism has also been used to exclude rather than to integrate as a unique truth to which others are expected to surrender or perish. Religious fundamentalists and political extremists have exploited this logic to turn monism first into dualism, which is, you know, just believe in God the way I define God and um, believe in me as the political leader who is bringing monism to earth, <laughs> that's dualism because there's no reason to do so, and eventually into genocidal ideology. So monism has also gotten used to think that you can uh, organize the, the world's races or um, religions according to uh, which one is the ultimate, which one is you want a monistic um, ethnic cleansing, you know, of everything other than the superior race. So that's horrible. And um, it can get used to that, that for that. But monism has been abused for pseudoscientific esotericism. It's, uh, and Aristotle was used for that. Westerners, white Westerners, and light during the enlightenment just said that we know better than you and we're the superior race and um in a you know monism there is a better and worse 
and we're the better. And so you have to listen to us. Uh, it's important to keep in mind that respect for nature. So monism should lead to respect for nature because we can understand nature and we can figure out how we fit in the midst, how we emerge from, from nature, how human beings emerged because there is this one consistent principle. So respect for nature implies we should not do everything that's possible. And even more, we need to accept nature as it is. That is, we should not project our own preconceived notions onto nature. We shouldn't project our own racism, sexism, cultural superiority complex or anything like that. Um, it's just the fact that there is an underlying order, we can find a common ground, but it's not going to be a common ground that divides us. It's going to be the one that unites us. Only if monism can pre preserve in an unbiased openness for diversity, an integrative perspective, can it become a philosophical guiding principle for humanity's future. This doesn't imply it's entirely hopeless to think that monism may make us less selfish and more open and tolerant. I would hope that it would. After all, monism changes the focus from the individual to the interdependent network of individual beings. So again, if we're, monism should lead us to common ground. In the past, whenever societies has been thought of as sort of organic, it has also led to asking individuals to sacrifice their own identity and to fit in with the bigger organism. And so, so we have to watch out for that, that you people are not just playing roles in a much broader um, or organic reality. Um, but on the other hand, we should be able to find common ground and we should really want to link together with each other because we are interdependent. We're not, we're not isolated individuals but we're not, uh, but we are individuals, like Aristotle says. A po political community is a pluralism. People are different, but together, uh, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. They have to work together. In particular, the monistic spirit influencing most, if not all religions and science alike, may help find a common ground shared by individuals of different backgrounds and beliefs, which could develop into a catalyst for religious understanding, tolerance, and peace. Such a mindset may indeed support us in collaborating and sustaining Earth, if it could become general consent, an integrated part of human culture. So this is where the recent conclusions from quantum physics, which used to be very impersonal, mechanistic and anti-organic, and the recent discoveries from biology, which is obviously very organic, have come together into uh, physics implies respect for the biosphere. The biosphere implies respect for understanding of the principles of reality and of the way the broader universe works. By any, any such effort can only be successful if monism and science in general can be conveyed convincingly to major portions of the entire population. This again is a major theme for somebody like me, an educator, is that education is so critical and that's what I want to impress on my Indonesian colleagues or on colleagues in developing countries, but also developed countries is that they have a lot of high sophisticated education, but to put it together in a certain way is what I would want to ask so that we can form a, an international sustainable civilization. If a large part of humanity feels excluded, either economically or intellectually, from the insights and benefits of monism or science in general, this will spark unrest. 
And in some of the future lectures, I will explain how that's, that is what's happened. The way the economic system has developed since the since Russia, the fall of the wall, has been that the rich have gotten richer and the poor poorer. This was not the original plan. And so now our democracies are being threatened. So um, people were excluded economically and intellectually. For the better part of humanity's history, monism, though deeply ingrained in our psychological heritage, that goes back to those mystical experience, it remained a luxury for a small group of privileged individuals. Again and again, history has shown that social groups that feel excluded from a philosophy claiming universal validity turn to religious fanaticism, extremist ideologies, and in general, a dualistic worldview, as exemplified in the origins of monotheistic religions and the fall of antiquity. In order for humanity to benefit from monism, it must become more inclusive. So when he says the fall of antiquity, he means the fall of humanism got replaced by very intolerant Christianity in the West, um, in the Mideast, um, that humanism might have been protected in the houses of wisdom, but around it, the Islam became more extremist. The Sunni Shia split led to a lot of division that Muhammad would not have liked, and on um, tribalism, a lot of quarrels between different tribes. So, so this is a basic foundation. And then the next three lectures will be focused specifically on including women. Monism should include women, and of course it hasn't in the past. Um, but it has to now. There's pretty broad agreement that this should be incorporated into any kind of international sustainable civilization. It really needs to include the equal treatment of women.